Hello everyone, I'm Driftwood. Welcome back to Learning Game Maker Studio 2. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make items that, uh, like loot drops for your enemies, and how to make like the, the items for those. So we'll kill an enemy here, and we see they have a chance to drop an item. You can see that little item started floating off, and if we go around and pick up that item, it, it turns into like a little animation, and it adds to a variable of that item, which will create uh, like a menu for to view how many of those we have later on, but we could have this item restore health We could have this item restore energy increase uh, give you extra experience whatever you wanted to do right now It's just adding to a variable. I'm calling this item like minerals like you know Which would be like your your gold coins if you're making an RPG or something, but let's get into it so go to your enemies where whatever your enemy is and go uh, to the step phase the step uh, event and inside where you have you're handling them dying when they've you know their HP is less than or equal to zero we're gonna create a temporary variable and the temporary variable is basically like a variable that can only be referenced inside this step this event so if I try to call loot drop from another object or even another tab it won't know what it is but the thing is for this we don't actually need uh, it to be referenced anywhere else except for inside of this step event for the the object uh, frigate or the enemy and the reason why you do this is to save memory and make your game uh, more optimized so wherever you can use a temporary variable you should use a temporary variable but um, a lot of the times it's just not possible to get away with making it temporary because you need to reference it later on here what we're going to be doing inside the conditional statement that says when the enemy's HP is less than zero we're going to create that temporary variable we'll call it loot drop and we'll set it to a random number between zero and a hundred that's going to give us a good uh, idea of how what percentage if we want to figure out a percentage of it to drop well if we want it to be 75 percent uh, of the time it drops this item we can say uh, make a conditional statement if that variable that loot drop is greater than or equal to 25 so if it rolls anything 25 to 100, it's going to that's you know that's 75% chance. If you wanted 50%, you change that to 50. If you want it like a 10% chance to drop, you would just change that to 90. So it's got to be 90 or higher to actually get that drop. But we'll just put it at 25. So like most of the time, it'll drop it. Um, the, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a new object. Uh, but before let's do this code for this. We're going to go instance create layer, which is going to summon a new object into the game. X and Y, this is the location where you want to put this new object that we're going to put down, the minerals. We're going to select the name of the layer we want it to be on, and in this case I want it to be right where the player is, the instance layer, but you'll reference the same name. Remember we have to use double quotes for that. And then we put another comma and we say, what object do we want to create? Well, we haven't made that object yet, but we're going to jump into that right now. So we're going to say object underscore minerals or gold coins or whatever you want it to be or health pack, you know. But for health pack, I'll probably make one on that later on to restore health and everything. But it's the same concept, except instead of adding to minerals variable, that will actually um, uh, like restore health, you know. So you'll, you'll reference the status. So that's it. Do the inline and, and that's pretty much it. So it's inside when the enemy dies. We roll a random number. If that number is 25 or higher, create a new object. And that's it. And so this is the when the object is killed, we have it turned to dust, and then we actually kill the object with that. So let's take a look at uh, the actual mineral object that we're going to be creating. So I've got this inside of loot. So I've made a subfolder, right-click, add group, and you can create a subfolder for all your loot drops. Let's add a new uh, object. Let's give it a create. So we're going to give it a, a scale, a size. So I've made an animation for it already up here which uh, I've done that several times so you guys should be pretty com uh, confident on how to make an animation now um, so just give it whatever animation you want it to have we're gonna set the scale it's completely arbitrary up to how big you want it to look if you make it 16 by 16 and you want it to be 8 by 8 just cut it in half if you made this 32 by 32 and you want it to be 8 by 8 just go uh, 0 0.25 and if you made it, you know, 32 by 32 and you want it 32 by 32, you could just get rid of that entirely and you don't need it. So now what we're doing is we're giving it a, a direction. And this is a built-in uh, keyword that 
game maker as already aliased and defined. So if you give it a direction, it's going to point it in a certain direction, 0 to 360. So 0 is default to the right, 0 is here. If you want it to go uh, facing a direction up, it's 90. To the left is 180, and going down is 270. But what we're doing is we're using the, the function random. And what random does is it takes one uh, variable, or one argument, it could actually probably, yeah, I bet it could probably use a variable too, if you just put a name of a variable in there. But what we're doing is we're giving it the ability to go in any direction. So we're going to say, pick a random direction from 0 to 360, and it will return uh, that value into direction. It'll store it into direction. So now we've set our direction, so it's going to go in that direction. Speed, uh, the next line is speed. We're going to give it a speed, which is another built-in keyword from Game Maker Studio. And... Uh, this is going to have it start moving. So this is going to, it's a simple way to get something to start moving. Every, every, uh, every step, I'm sorry, every frame of the game, it's going to, it's going to use this. Whatever's in here, it's going to move. Even if it's only set on the create, you know, we're not setting the speed on the, the, the step event. We set the speed on the create event, and now that it has a direction and a speed, Newton's law, it's going to keep going until something stops it. Um, I don't know how that applies because we're not using physics in this version, but it's the same thing that happens. So we're going to set a random range. This is similar to random, except this is going to say we don't want it to just be a random number from anything to this number. We want to specify at least this much, but no more than this. So we're going to say a random range from 0.1 to 0.5. So it's going to move uh, 0.1 to 0.5 uh, pixels every step of the game, every frame of the game. So very slow, that's super slow. You can change these numbers to make it move as fast as you want. I don't want the loot to just fly off the screen, but I don't want it to just stay there. Um, so from the explosion of the ship, I think that it would probably have some sort of uh, momentum um, and it probably have like a random direction. So we're giving it a random direction and a random speed. So then we're gonna make a, a collision event. So we add event, add to go to collision, and then when, the, when this object collides with the player, what do we want to have happen? So we're going to say with uh, obj underscore status, because in obj underscore status, let's take a look at it real quick, that's where I'm storing the value of how many minerals the player actually has. So this is like how many gold coins they have, I put it right in here. So we're saying with that object, oh no, sorry about that, keep forgetting that middle click goes to the help file. Um, so with, with obj status, we're going to say minerals equals minerals plus one, or minerals plus equals one, or even minerals plus plus, or plus plus minerals. I think all of those would actually work fine. But this is just uh, simplified so that you know what it does. Um, but we don't actually have to do obj uh, underscore status dot minerals because we're referencing, referencing it right here. So with obj under status, what this does is it basically puts this in front of every variable that we're calling. So we can just get rid of that, and it will it will um, add minerals to our status. And we want to eventually get rid of it, right? Um, otherwise, every frame of the game that the character is on it, it'll keep adding to it. So uh, you don't want that. So we're going to say instance create layer, and then we've already used this one, so you can pretty much predict what's going what, how it goes, all the arguments, the location of the x, the location of the y, the layer you want it to be on and the object you want to call on. So I've created another object called collect item, which we'll go into next. But for now, you can just go object and a short collect item. So we're creating, uh, like, letting the player know, hey, we picked it up. So we're creating an animation for that. Then we're going to destroy that instance so that it doesn't keep adding to the minerals and you don't get a bunch of minerals for one, uh, one item that you picked up. The last thing we're going to do is, since we're setting it to a random direction, the player may never actually get it. And they may, it, it'll still move off the screen unless we block that, but I, I didn't really want to do that. So um, we're just going to say uh, destroy it. If it ever gets off the screen, destroy it because we won't be able to see it anymore. We won't be able to get to it anymore. There's no reason for it to continue to take up system resources. So if it gets outside the room, we can go to um, add an event, other, outside room, instance destroy. That way we are optimizing our game. And that's it for the minerals. Let's take a look at the obj underscore collect item. So create a new one, uh, and if you want an animation that is. You don't actually have to have that for the mechanics to work right. But what we're doing here is we're um, 
giving it the animation, I created another animation for it. On the step phase, we're setting the scale uh, to half its size, so it's eight by eight, so it's a similar size as the, um, as the actual minerals itself. It's just like a little dust animation. Add a step event. We're gonna say image alpha equals image alpha minus 0 0.05. That's gonna have, have it continue, continue to get more invisible as uh, it progresses. So it'll just eventually disappear completely, but it'll still be there, but you won't be able to see it. So we have to do something else at the end. We're gonna say our image X scale is our image X scale plus 0 0.5. So this animation is going to get bigger. So it's going to, every step, every frame, it's gonna increase in size. So it's gonna get more invisible and it's gonna increase in size. And we're also uh, setting the Y scale to match the X scale, but we could also just go Y scale plus 0 0.5. 0 0.5. 0, 0.05 and it would do the same thing but it's just uh, I guess it's easier to do that um, so conditional statement after there we have to get rid of it so if image alpha is less than equal to 0 which means if it ever becomes invisible so that we can't see it actually get rid of the object so we're also optimizing it so uh, even though it's invisible it could still be in memory unless we destroy that uh, instance so we'll take a look at that one last time that's pretty much it that's how you add an item and everything that involves with uh, giving a uh, giving a value. So we'll kill this thing and there's a 75% chance. You see it didn't drop at that time. We'll kill this thing, 75% chance, there it is. You can see that it's going in a random direction. We'll see if we can get another one here. There's another one. Look, they're all going in random directions and they all have a little bit of a different speed. We go over it and you see it turned to dust. That image is getting more invisible and, and it's getting bigger as it goes on. So boom, that's our little collection thing, boom. So that's it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying these Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment below that you liked it or you have a question about it, didn't work for you, uh, what do you, what, you want to make a specific item, how do you do it. Um, I'll take special requests. Um, won't be able to do everything that I get, but I will respond to you and let you know um, that I'll try to figure it out if, or I'll respond with the video for you. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials or if you're interested in RPG Maker MV tutorials. I've got a plethora of them. Um, so yeah, I've got a ton of those tutorials. I'm gonna make a lot more tutorials for Game Maker Studio 2. So thank you guys so much for your support. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, come check us out on Discord. I have a, a Discord channel that you know everybody hangs out in. We've got quite a few members now. I mean, it's pretty late, so there's not a lot of people online. But um, if you're a Patreon backer, um, you can uh, get special rewards by um, you get your own rank, and basically you can at everybody, and you can use text to speech commands. And uh, basically, if you need help with your game maker uh, game, you know any GMS or GML that you're having trouble with, come in here. There's a lot of people here who know what they're doing. And we'd all be happy to help you if you're into RPG Maker. We got a, a lot of, uh, you can ask your questions in here. And not only will I help you, but these other people here are great. And uh, they'll help you too. So come check it out. The link for the Discord is in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.